bless your name in this place. We lift you up, Holy Spirit of living God. Yes, Lord God, we thank you for your blood. We thank you for your power and your angels encamped around us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that every principality that would look or attempt to stop anything that we're doing lord god to your glory lord jesus that they would be arrested and cast into hellfire right now in jesus name yes lord god uh throw them into outer darkness and lock them up with with chains that cannot be loosed in jesus name thank you father thank you that the enemy's tongue will stick to the roof of their mouth if they dare to open up against us right now in jesus name Father, you are teacher and you are father. Yes, Lord God, Lord Jesus, you said you are father only and you are teacher. So we just invite you, Lord God, to have your way, have your way, Holy Spirit, have your way, teacher and guide, wonderful counselor, mighty, beautiful God, holy, holy is your name, Jesus, oh, we bless your name, um, I hope I'm coming through clear enough, there's a lot of noise around, I'm, I'm working with it, okay, I'm trying, let's go into study right now. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, fill this room. Shekinah glory, sweet perfume. We need your presence. We need you. Holy Spirit, fill this room. Shekinah glory. Sweet perfume. Yes, Lord God. You come Baba Bahanda Shiday. Rekam Baba Bahanda Shiday. Ah, see, they're already starting your nonsense. Devil, get thee hence. Get thee hence, Satan. Okay, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. If God is for us, then who can be against us? We're going to tie up the scriptures in. Well, we're going to tie them. He's going to tie up the scriptures in, okay? He's going to tie the. He's going to tie them into each other. Um, so we're going here. Yes, Father, we thank you for your mercy, your grace, your love, your loving kindness. Thank you, Jesus. I can't see a thing. Okay, here we go. Let me just get one scripture window open. There we go. If God is for us. In Romans 8. This is blocking me now. Alright. In Romans. I don't know where to put this thing. Okay. In Romans 8. Verse, we're reading from verse 30. Um, 30 to... 32 and those he predestined he also called those he called he also justified and those he justified he also glorified what then shall we say in response to these things if God is for us who can be against us he who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all how will he not also along with him freely give us all things hallelujah oh there's so much you, i don't, are you guys hearing me i can't even hear myself okay. i'm taking off this right now maybe this will help thank you and let me just get one Amara Shanda, Rakamba Hashanda, O Lord Jesus, Father God, Father God, have your way. Ah, silence the enemy. Okay, here we go. Okay, and we're reading again. Romans 8, reading from verse 30 to 32. And those who he predestined, he also called. Remember he said, many are called, but few 
are chosen. He called, and those he called, he also justified. Remember, he says, not one whom the Father has given to me I have lost. Um, those he justified, he also glorified. Remember, um, where does the Bible say, we shall be glorified in him? Unfailing Father God. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go right now into John 13. Something's burning my eyes like pepper or something. I don't know. But John 13, verse 31 to 33. When Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify the Son in Himself. He will glorify Him at once. Hallelujah. He said, little children, now listen. He just made that statement. This is kind of loud, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so He just made that statement in John 13, verse 31 to 32. When Judas had gone out, he left. The accuser, the um, the the culprit, he's exposed and he left. He's cast out. He said, "Now the prince of this world is cast out." Okay. Um, okay. We need to be writing a little bit. When Judas had gone out, Jesus said, "Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in Him." So, okay. And then God will glorify, if God is glorified in him, the Son of Man, which is the Son of God, okay, the flesh that is subjected to him, God Almighty Spirit, if God is glorified in him, God will also glorify the Son in, his, in himself and will glorify him at once. Here's what he said, little children, now he's speaking to us like a father little children I am with you only a little while longer you look for me and as I said to the Jews hi hi how are you you look familiar Sheila from oh yeah 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 how are you I'm good you're good yeah things get better yes Awesome. So I'm glad to see you. Awesome. Okay. Go bear testimony with someone yeah, I will. that Jesus did it for you and yeah. tell them, hey, just like Jesus loves you, who loves them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bye. God bless. Bye. Um. So he's speaking to us like like a father to kids now. So he just gave that statement and I was like, little children, I am with you only a little while longer. You'll look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you. Where I am going, you cannot come. Because remember, he said to Peter, he's telling me, um, just now we're going to go into this verse here right now. Why is he saying where where he's going, we can't go? Not yet, right? Because he had to be, just now, he had to be glorified. But remember when he told Peter this? Come follow me. Father. Then sings my soul. Matthew, reading from Matthew 4, ow, reading from verse 18 to 20. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. fishermen. <laughs> they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said. I will make you fishers of men. And at once they left their nets and they followed him. There was no, there was no hesitation. They were, they were, they, they just dropped everything and left, okay? And here's what he's saying. Going on from there, he saw other, two other brothers. James, son of, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and Jesus called to them. 
and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. I hear him saying, um, to whom has left, just now, God will reward him, just now, I know, I know that scripture, to whom, I tell you, not one who has left their, well, their wives or their husbands or their homes. Okay, hallelujah. Okay, so in Luke, in Luke 18, reading from verse 20, 28 to 30. Look, said Peter, we have left everything we had to follow you. Truly, I tell you, Jesus replied, no one who's left home or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times more at the proper time and in the age to come eternal life. Hallelujah. They will what? Receive eternal life. Amen. Let's get it in the King James Version, reading from verse 29 to 30. Hallelujah, Father. Ow. My tummy hurts a little bit. Okay. Um. Then Peter said, Lo, all we have left, we have left all and followed you. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that has left house or parent or brethren or wife or children for the sake of God for the kingdom of God's sake who shall not receive manifold more in this present time and in the world to come life everlasting okay and then he took them the twelve the twelve disciples and said unto them behold we go up to Jerusalem and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. His own people rejected him. All right. Um, we're going into Matthew 4. We're back into Matthew 4. Where, he, remember he said, come follow me. And remember what we're examining is John 13, where when judas had gone out so he told his disciples to follow him that is trust him that is be led by his spirit come follow do what jesus did okay and here's what he's saying when judas had gone out jesus said now the son of man is glorified and god is glorified in him the accuser of the brethren um okay we have to go there now now the prince of this world will be driven out and then um, I hear him rebuking Peter even all right so what we're examining what was the name of the screen the scripture again we're so deep in here um the name of us of god is for us then who can be against us okay um all right um so we saw that peter and andrew and john and jay man everybody just left and followed him when they they he called them okay john in john 13 32 and he says okay so Judas wasn't following Jesus. Can we agree on that? Can we agree that he was tagging along and he was always complaining and, you know, he's judging them on the, the, the amount of money that they have and the treasury. Why are we giving it to the this and that? And he was, he was really, really, Satan was working in him, okay? But there's something that happened before Judas went out. Judas didn't just go out on his own. This is what happened here. He said, he who dips, listen, we'll go back and see if this is in here in this book. Okay. We're going back to verse, let's go back straight into 13, 
John 13. I have been loved to the one I loved and the one loved. Amen. Go share that love yeah, in Jesus' you name. You love to the love. Amen. They give you love Say to no the to Lord. drugs. You the Lord. Sir, you thank you very Lord. much. Okay. Uh, it's a guy who likes to harass. Oh my gosh. It's terrible. Um, John 13, reading from verse... Wow, we're going all the way back into 23-ish, yeah? I think, I hope this, okay, here we go. Oh, we have to go a little bit further. We're going into verse 20, John 13, verse 20. After Jesus said this, he became troubled in the spirit and testified. We're, we're going... 20 oh. Heavenly Father all right so he was telling them that he will be betrayed and all of that okay wait. well I'm still going back okay how about I just get the Bible huh? this internet thing is just getting to me now What are you looking for, John? Right here. Thank you. And verse 13. I'm lost without you. And we're in well, I'm chapter 13. All right, here we go. The internet can't hold me back now. Hallelujah. Okay, so... Ah, we are looking at John 13, reading from verse 17. You know these things. You will be blessed if you do them. I'm not speaking about all of you. I know whom I have chosen. But this is to fulfill the scripture. The one who eats bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. I'm telling you now before it happens so that when it comes to pass you will believe I am he and God says he'll tell he'll say his things we're going into John 13 19 as well okay oh that's it right there that's the scripture about prophecy right there okay so he says when it comes to pass you will believe that I am he um, John 13 20 Truly, truly, I tell you, whoever receives the one I send receives me. And whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. So if they, if, okay, God says if God is for us, then who can be against us, all right? So when he said, go into all the world and preach, and people say, hey, uh, people are not going to like it. People are this, people are that. Okay, listen. He said, truly, I tell you, whoever receives the one I send, receives me. Somebody say, Holy Spirit, you have come. Holy Spirit, I've received you. Okay, even so. And whoever receives me, receives the one who sent me. So he's saying, you got to receive the Holy Spirit. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive me. All right. Um, wait. We're reading verse 20 of John 13. I have the Bible open and I'm flipping the, the page on the internet. All right, here we go. All right. Reading from verse 19. Now I tell you before it comes to pass that when it has come to pass, you may believe I am he. Verily, I say unto you, he that receives whomever I send receives me. And he that receives me, receives him who sent me. When Jesus has thus said, when he, when he had finished saying, he was troubled, he was greatly troubled, he was, hey. He was troubled in the spirit and testified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. 
the disciples looked one unto the other and doubting whom he had spoke. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of the disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoned him that he should ask who it should be of him that he spoke. He then lying on Jesus' breast said to him, Lord, who is it? And Jesus answered, He it is whom I shall give a sup when I have dipped it. Whoever dips his bread with me, all right? And when he had dipped the sup, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sup, listen, God knows who he chose. Amen. Listen, he knows what's in the heart and he knows which vessels are going to be used for his glory and which vessels are going to be used for his dishonor. When he had given the sup, Satan entered into him. Ah, I want you to say right now that the blood of Jesus exposes evil and overcomes them. Amen. Satan entered into him. Because it's like, um, wow, God is showing me he might have rejected it. He might have even, he didn't want, like, how to say it. Satan knows. Satan knows the plan of God. He knows. Um, he doesn't know all of it, but he knows exactly what the crucifixion would do and that's why he tried to prevent Jesus from doing it and all of that all right so um when he gave when he he dipped had dipped the sup he gave it to Judas Iscariot and the son of Sim the son of Simon who is the son of Simon and after the sup Satan entered into him and said Jesus unto him do thou quickly what you must he already know is there God says listen your thoughts in your heart I know it don't even bother hiding remember when Jesus was preaching he showed me one Sabbath he was preaching in the synagogue and this man sat there in the pews and he was saying he had a demon and um, he's preaching by Beelzebub and he's saying all these things and Jesus said he knew the thoughts that the man was thinking we'll go there in a while um, right so we're coming back now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him nobody knew but god knew all right for some of them thought because judas had the bag that jesus had said unto him go buy those things that we have need of for the feast or that he should give something to the poor judas had what he had the collection he had the bag he was loving money he had the bag what did he do with the bag this is what he did with the bag okay then he having received the sup went immediately out and it was night therefore when he was going out jesus said now the son of man is glorified and god is glorified in him now the purpose will be revealed. Now the, now, it's now. Now is the hour. Now, it's um, Satan is exposed. Okay. Um, hey. Okay. If but if God be glorified in Him, God shall also glorify Him in Himself, and shall straightway glorify Him. Little children. Yet a little while I'm with you. Ye shall seek me. As I said unto the Jews, whether I, where I go, you cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment that I give to you. So he's not going to be with them in a physical sense, but now he's going to be with them. How? Through the Holy Spirit. Amen. So now he says, a new commandment I give to you. A new one. That ye love one another as I have loved you. Hallelujah. That you also love one another. And then he said, By this men shall know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. If you have love to one another. <sighs> 
Oh gosh. Okay. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whither you go, where would you go? And Jesus answered him, Where I go, you cannot follow, but you shall follow me afterwards. So he's coming back. Amen. That's confirmation right there that where he is, we will be. Remember he said, um, set your heart, um, set your eyes on things that are above and not in this world. He said, where your treasure is, there your heart is. Where your treasure is, there your, where your heart is, your treasure is. That's what I normally say, but where your treasure is, your heart is. So he's telling Peter, listen. If you desire to be with me, if you desire to please me, if you desire to walk with me, if you desire to follow me, if you desire to to go where I'm going, then you'll be wherever your where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Okay? Where your heart will be, there your treasure is at. <laughs> well let's find it. Which way is it? Where your treasure is? I don't even know why I'm reading this right now. Where your treasure is. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And it's in Matthew 6. 6.21. Reading from verse 20. Hallelujah. And it says, this is what it says. But store for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your vision is clear, then your whole body will be full of light. Alright, so let's go back straight into the beginning now. If God is for you, all right. So God says, perfect love cast out fear. More than often, remember what we're talking about is revelations and the end times, all right? So we're looking at what the dragon hates about the people of God and what assurance, what hope we have in him when we stand in Christ Jesus, knowing that there's nothing that can overtake us because God is for us, all right? 1 John 4 Reading from verse 17 to 19, and it says, In this way, love has been perfected among us, so that we may have confidence on the day of judgment. For in this world, we're like him. We're just like him. There is no fear in love, but perfect love dries out fear. Because fear involves punishment. Okay, so listen to this, and I want you to take it in. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Jesus' perfect love drives out fear, casts out fear. Because fear involves punishment. The only reason you will fear is if you have something to be punished for. Listen, the one who fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us that's why we love all right so if god is for us then who can be against us jesus is showing me him sitting with um um tax collectors so we're going there into that bible verse In Mark verse 2 reading from um, Mark chapter 2 reading from verse 
13 straight on to 17. He went forth again by the seaside, and all the multitude resorted to him, and he taught them. And as he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the receipt of customs, and said to him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at meat in his house, many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples. For there were many, and they followed him. And when the scribes and the Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples, How is it that he eats and he drinks with publicans and sinners? And when Jesus heard it, he said unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I come to call, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So therefore, I hear him saying, the son, of, the son of man has come to seek and save the lost. I'll tell you why he's showing us these scriptures just now. He's calling us to step away from man-made doctrine. Man-made doctrine. Okay, what do I mean? Some people, some people will minister to to who is in their congregation but some even some pastors some pastors will not go they will not go to uh, say a bar or a prostitute house or uh, they will not go because they have the fear of reproach they have the fear of men what they'll say but listen Jesus Jesus went and he sat with these people he sat with with the tax collectors, he sat with the prostitutes, he sat with the publicans, well yeah well, you know, the tax collectors and they. He sat with sinners and not only did he sit with them, but guess what? While he was speaking, I'm sure they would have listened to him. They would have been drawn to him because he said the Son of Man has come to seek and save the lost. He's saying, if God is for you, nobody can be against you. Okay, um, we're going to go into that deeper. But right now, he's giving like a view on being afraid. So, in Luke 19, reading from verse 9 to 11, Jesus said to him, Today, salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. Let's see whose house he went to. Was it? It was Zacchaeus, right? Okay. So in Luke 19, reading from verse 7 onwards. And all who saw this, remember what happened to Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus saw Jesus walking in a crowd. And... No, you didn't, sir. People getting crazy inside here. Like, wow. Nah, he's heckling me. Um, Luke 19, 7, reading from 7 to 9. And all who saw this begin to grumble, saying, He's gone to be the guest of a sinful man. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Alright, wait, we're going to go where Zacchaeus climbs the tree. Zacchaeus was a tax, a tax collector, okay? So Jesus was walking in the crowd, and Zacchaeus was a short man. So he climbed a tree to see Jesus, because he couldn't see over the cloud. I'm um, over the crowd, over the crowd, crowd, not cloud, okay? In Luke 19, 3. In Luke 19, 2. There was a man named Zacchaeus, a chief tax collector, who was very wealthy, and he was trying to see who Jesus was, but could not see over the crowd because he was small in stature, was short. So he ran on ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, since Jesus was about to pass that way. 
talk about determination, right? When Jesus came to that place, he looked up and he said, Zacchaeus, hurry down, for I must stay at your house today. Seek the Lord diligently. Amen. Seek the Lord and you shall find him. I hear him saying in the spirit, we're going to go there. This is not just a message for, this is a, mass, a message for everybody. This is for Hinduism, this is from Islam, this is for Buddhists, this is for atheists. Jesus is saying, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Once I call you, once you hear my voice calling you, step out on the limb. Look what Zacchaeus did. Zacchaeus climbed a tree. Where am, okay, I'm looking at Jeremiah 29, reading from verse 12 to 14. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you search me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes, and I will gather you from all nations and from all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from where I sent you into exile. God is saying, if you hear him, harden not your heart, but come, okay? Um, so we're reading back in Luke 19, verse 5. So when Jesus came to that place, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, hurry down, for I must stay at your house today. Faith pleases God, amen? And when we seek him, we really find him. So Zacchaeus hurried down and welcomed him joyfully. That's what he wanted all along. And all who saw this begin to grumble, saying, He has gone to be with the guest of the sinful man. Ay, ay, ay. But Jesus said, I came for not the well, but the sick. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Lord, look, ha, look, look, Lord, half of my possessions I give to the poor. And if I have cheated anyone, I will repay fourfold. Wow, he's gonna he's gonna do double. He's gonna recompense, but he's also gonna give his most to it. Okay. Um, he doesn't care what people are thinking about him right now. All he knows is that this day salvation has come to him. Hallelujah! You are my God. But Zacchaeus stood up and said, "Lord, look, half of my possessions I'll give to the poor." And if I've cheated anyone, I repeat fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. Why? He has faith. Hallelujah. Luke 19, 9. Um, Luke 19, 10. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the Lord. Oh, that's where it was. The Son of Man came to seek and save the you see how he ties up the you see how he blends it in for the son of man came to seek and save the lost father from the dawn of time you reign to the end of days you the god who stays the same okay and it says while the people were listening to this Jesus proceeded to tell them a parable because he was near Jerusalem and they thought the kingdom of God would appear eminently. All right. Because he said, listen. So he said, a man of noble birth went into a country, a distant country, to lay claim to his kingship and then return because a prophet has no honor in his own country. Remember that. You hear him saying it. A prophet has no honor in his own country. And why do you think he says this? He says his very own did not receive him. His very own father. Glory. I always feel like crying when I see that. John, um, John 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, <laughs> John 4, 
John. Okay, we're reading Mark 6, 4 first. Isn't this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? Aren't his, sister here, his sisters here with us as well? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus told them, A prophet is without honor only in his hometown, among his relatives, and in his own household. So he could not perform any miracles there except to lay a hands, lay hands, lay his hands on a few of the sick and heal him, because they didn't believe. They're like, "You're right, whatever." Jesus is a carpenter, whatever. But they didn't even know that he was among them. Man, isn't that crazy? John four, reading verse forty-four. And he says, if God is for you, then who can be against you? Let that play in your head. When he says, listen, a prophet has no honor in his own country, you need to leave, okay? John 4, 44. After two, day, after two days, Jesus left for Galilee. Now he himself had testified, a prophet has no honor in his own country. Yet when he arrived, the, Gal the, Galilee the Galileans welcomed him. Do you see that? wherever we go else so where the Spirit of God rests upon us and this is for me as well where it rests upon me here I am to leave I have to leave I have to go somewhere else and he when he arrived the Galileans welcomed him they had seen all the great things he had done in Jerusalem for, at the feast for they had gone there as well you see he said, Blessed are they, I hear him. Ah, all my pores, look. It's just on end, it's raised up. He said, Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Matthew. Matthew 5, reading from verse 5 to 7, okay? And it reads, Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. They shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Okay. Um... Trust in him, the winds and waves still know his name. Remember, so he's in his, he, this is hurtful though. Because imagine it's where he grew up. It's where he, he everybody knows him. And nobody believes that he is who he says he is okay in John 1 reading from verse 10 to 12 he was in the world and though the world was made through him the world did not recognize him he came to his own and his own did not receive him but all who did receive him to those who believed in his name he gave the right to become the children of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Father. So, remember in John 19, where, somewhere, where, okay, this is what he said. Um, they were pushing, they were, people were pushing to, I think they were pushing to reach him. And then the disciples said, um, your mother and your brother, and your, they're, they're outside waiting to see you. Okay. In John 19, reading from verse 26 to 28, when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, woman, here is your son. And then his disciples, 
he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. So from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, knowing that everything had now been accomplished to fulfill the scripture, Jesus said, I'm thirsty. This is on the cross. This is not it. This is not it. We're going to where he said, here are your mothers and your brother. There we go. It is well. Alignment. Mark 3, A crowd was sitting, reading from verse 32. A crowd was sitting around him. Look, he was told, your mother and your brothers are outside asking for you. Jesus replied, who are my mother and my brothers? Looking at those seated in a circle around him, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. Verse 35. For whoever does the will of my whoever does the will of God is my brother and my mother and my sister. Ugh. All right, let me just close off some things. Here we go. If God is for us, then who can be against us? So many times many many times okay there's gonna be people who are gonna come against you for the gospel they're gonna come against you for Christ they're gonna come against you because you stand up for what is right why we are not here to please be pleasers of men we are here to be pleasers of God let's just find that right now Ephesians 6, 6. <laughs> All right, we're reading from verse 5 to 7. We're not there to just stand and look, okay? Because when we know, we're called as witnesses. All right, slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and sincerity of heart, just as you would show Christ. And do this not only to please them while they're watching, but, <sighs> sorry, he's talking about integrity here, but as servants of Christ doing the will of God from your heart. Serve with goodwill as to the Lord and not to men. Why is he saying that? In Galatians, because we're here to please God and not men, okay? So he's saying, listen, everybody's not doing what they're supposed to be doing, but don't jump in the crowd and say, okay, everybody's doing it, so I'm going to do it also, okay? You're not there to with eye service you're there with your heart you're there to serve from your heart listen Galatians 1 9 reading from 9 to 11 as we've said before now so now I say again if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you embraced let him be under a divine curse am I now seeking the approval of men or of God or am I striving to please men? If I was still trying to please men, I would not be a servant of Christ. Do you hear that? Can someone take that in right now? If I was still trying to please men, I would not be a servant of Christ. For I certify to you, brothers, that the gospel I preach is not devised by men, but by God. Amen? And I hear him saying, for I am not ashamed. Promise still stands. Faithfulness. Oh. Yes. 
yes, Lord. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. All right, Romans 1, reading from verse 15 to 17. And you can do it again. Okay, Romans 1, reading from verse 15 to 17. All right? And it says, That is why I'm so eager to preach the gospel also to you who are in Rome. I am not ashamed of the gospel before, because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. First to the Jew and then to the Greek. For the gospel reveals the righteousness of God that comes by faith from start to finish just as it was as it was written the righteous will live by faith the just will live by faith oh that was good yes lord thank you Faithfulness, the just shall live by faith. In Hebrews, in Hebrews 10, reading from verse 37 to 40. for a little while for yet a little while and he shall come for a little for yet a little while and he that shall come will come and will not tarry I hear him say for God is not slow or slack concerning his promises Father, your promise still stands, great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. Hebrews 10, reading from verse 37, 37 to 39, there's no 40, okay, if yet a little while. And he, for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. If any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. There's no 40. <laughs> so let's read Hebrew 1, Hebrew 11 1. Rapture. Oh, when I see the alignments of the ones, I just know it's rapture. Ay, ay, ay. The now. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are, which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Remember he says, call all things into being as though it were. Huh? 
see you do it again. By faith. Listen, by faith. Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead still speaks. By faith, Enoch was transl when translated was translated that he should not see death, and he was not found because God had translated him. God took him. Before his translation, he had this testimony. He pleased God. For Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. All right? Where's the scripture? We're looking at it? Okay. Second Peter 3, reading from verse 8 to 10. If God is for us, who can be against us? Beloved, do not let this one thing escape your notice. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill His promise, as some understand slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be dissolved in fire, and the earth and its works will not be found. The earth and its works will not be found. There it is in the Bible. And let's see, just one more verse. Since everything will be dissolved in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to be people, you ought to conduct yourself in holiness and godliness. If God is for you, who can be against you? As you anticipate and hasten the coming of the day of God when the heavens will be dissolved by fire and the elements will melt in the heat what's going to happen everything's going to melt down okay people say no the earth's going to be not going to be destroyed and no the heavens going to be there does god mean what he means yeah he does okay um Right, calling those things. Okay, we're reading Romans 4 from verse 16 to 18. Therefore, the promise comes by faith, so that it may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham he is the father of us all as it is written I have made you a father of many nations he is our father in the presence of God in whom he believed the God who gives life to the dead and calls into being what does not yet exist hello hello hallelujah I was gonna say hallelujah and I said hello hallelujah against all hope Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations as he had been told so shall your offspring be so God is showing the importance of faith the just shall live by faith listen he's calling us to step out he says don't be afraid don't be afraid at all because God is for you then who can be against you if God is for you who can be against you so reading Hebrews 11 verse 6 but without faith it is impossible to please him for he that come to God must believe that he is and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him okay 
by faith Noah being warned of God of things that had not things not seen as yet moved with godly fear prepared an ark to the saving of his house by which he condemned the world the ark condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith listen let's read this again okay by faith noah being warned of god of things not yet seen but he believed god okay and it was accounted what righteousness by faith unto noah even okay so here's what god says um right he was moved with a godly fear prepared an ark to the saving of his house God said do it he did it whatever God said he did and by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith how did he inherit it by faith of the righteousness ah how are we saved by the righteousness of God how do we access it through faith what did Noah do he did what God said you see how that works it's a beautiful thing how he works isn't it and he gives the exact example he comes by faith Abraham when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance obeyed and he went out not knowing where he went out God said Abraham take Sarah and go Abraham go he didn't even have to say twice he just said Abraham take Sarah and go Sarah was his wife right and what did Abraham do he said man I'm not sure Oh, I think we should wait a while did he he did not question God okay so by faith he sojourned in the land of the promise as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob the heirs of him with the same promise do you see God blessed him oh hallelujah for he looked for a city which has foundations whose builder and maker is God he's looking at New Jerusalem he's looking at a greater thing he's not looking at what is around him and saying well this is the final thing he's looking to something greater the Bible says no eyes have seen no ears have heard nor has it entered into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for those who love him if God is for us then who can be against us it's you the Lord will fight. Father God. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. You are worthy of all praise, oh honor, oh glory, Father. Okay. The Lord will fight for us. In Exodus 14:14. 14, 14, reading from verse 13 to 15. But Moses said to the people. Do not fear. Stand by. Stand up. Doing all you can do to stand. Man, pull yourself together. Get your faith in motion. Stand up in the fear of the Lord and know that He will fight. Let's now let's find out. Doing all you can to stand. But Moses said to the people, Exodus 14, reading from verse 13 to 15, Stand by and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you will never see them again forever. The Lord will fight for you while you keep silent. And then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? I, he t tell the sons of Israel to go forward. What? Go forward where? What? The ocean is before us. Lord, how can we do it? Ah, it's impossible. Lord, will you leave us here to perish? And he says, stand still. All right, and here we go. 
As for you, now he talks to the prophet, lift up your staff and stretch out your hand above over the sea and divide it and the sons of Israel shall go through the midst of the sea on dry land. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to go by the ocean and try this. And I'm going to go live if I can get signal. If not, I'm going to tape it. As for me, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, so they will go in after them. So God is saying, listen, the path I prepare for my people, it's safe. But if the enemy wants to come after the path that I prepare for my people, it's not safe. It's near destruction. There's a highway of holiness. God says, listen, don't be afraid to walk on it. Only the righteous will walk upon it. Wicked will not go there. And he's saying, there's a, there's a, a, there's a path that my people travel on. And if the wicked dare to step on that path, they will be destroyed. Okay? Um, if they just think they can come as they are without the saving grace of God. Listen. <sighs> I will harden the heart of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And I will be honored through Pharaoh and his army, through all his chariots and his horsemen. And Egypt will fear God. Amen? Um, hey. And the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I am honored through Pharaoh, through his chariots and his horsemen. He's bringing down Pharaoh's army. How many? Six? Six hundred, I think? Is it? Six hundred? Um, or oh, six thousand? Some six something, okay? So, um, God is for you, who can be against you? Thus says the Lord, I will fight for you. Ephesians 6, reading from verse 12 to 14. For our struggle is not against flesh, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, principalities, against the powers of this world's darkness, and against the spiritual forces of evil in high places or heavenly realms. Therefore, take up the full armor of God, so that when the evil day comes, you will be able to stand your ground, and having done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of with the belt of truth fastened around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness arrayed. <laughs> and with your feet lifted in the readiness of the gospel of peace. He said, get ready. You always... I hear him say, always be ready with a gentle explanation. Something like that. Always be ready with a answer or a gentle explanation. Something. Always be ready. First Peter 3, reading from verse 40 to 16. Oh, yeah, go ahead. But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their intimidation. Do not be shaken. But in your heart sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to articulate a defense to anyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope you have. But respond to him with gentleness and respect. Don't go yelling, well, Jesus is Lord! On! You, there's no other way, and you, you're not yelling it out, you know? You're giving them, so they too can be saved. Keeping a clear conscience, so that those who slander you will be put to shame by your good behavior in Christ. And anger, anger them a little more. I've done that. Every time I've tried to be nice to my enemies, I've been, man... Okay, I've been attacked. For it is better 
If it is God's will to suffer for doing good than doing evil. It's God's will. Who are we here to please? God. If God is for you, then who can stand against you? Amen. Remember, he says, the angel of the Lord encamped around those who, who love the Lord and fear him. Amen. So we're here. The angel. Hmm? I spell an angel. An angel. An angel. Not the angel. The angel. Do not go with me yet. I will follow. Okay. This poor Psalms 34, reading from verse 6 to 8. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him from all his troubles. And the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and rescues them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. See that? If God is for you, then who can be against you? Remember when Jacob and Esau was born? Remember one took hold of the other's heel? Do you remember it? And he pulled him back in? <laughs> Let's see that right now. God already knew, amen? He said, before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. Um... I was just so rude. I'm sorry. Genesis, well, he didn't pull him back in. He pulled, he, well, you know, he took hold of his foot. That's what I heard in the spirit. So we're going there. That's why I laughed. Genesis 25, reading from verse 25 to 27. Now the first came forth red all over like a hairy garment. <laughs> Father, I'm sorry. And they named him Esau. Who, he was like a hairy, a red hair. He was like a Scottish mat or something. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Now the f sorry. Genesis 25, 25. Now the first came forth red, all over like a hairy garment, and they named him Esau. Afterwards, his brother came forth with his hand holding on to Esau's heel. So his name was called Jacob, and Isaac was 60 years old when she gave birth to him. When the boys grew up, Esau became a skillful hunter and a man of the field, but Jacob was a peaceful man living in tents. Hmm. So you see, there's something God likes about humbleness and peace. He likes, he likes it a lot, yeah? He likes it a lot. The one who can surrender will receive the promise. Listen, now Isaac loved Esau because he had a taste for the game, for game. And hey, he used to bring home the meat, good stew. But Rebecca loved Jacob. I can't see, it's a slip to, um... I was getting like a little headache. Just, just like just like that? What? No. And it's gone. That's it. It's gone. So we're looking at... If I could turn the page. Can I turn the page, please? I'm not seeing anything. Oh, it's down there. Okay, now I see. Okay. All right, so where are we? Right, Esau was a hunter, but Jacob lived in tents. <sighs> so 
Isaac loved Esau and Rebecca loved Jacob. When Jacob came home and cooked stew, Esau came in from the field and he was famished. So, mm, guess what happened? Esau said to Jacob, please, let me have a swallow of that red stuff there. For I am famished, and therefore his name was called Edom. Hungry. But Jacob said, first sell me your birthright. Okay, so we're going to Edom to see the meaning of Edom, all right? The Hebrew word Edom means red. I want something a little more than that. Red all over. Red pottage. Red. Come on. I want a... Edom has a name. Um, has a meaning. I want it. Alright, here we go. Edom is the name of the nation that sprung from Esau, son of Isaac and Rebekah, the brother of Jacob. I know why we're doing this right now, but we're doing this. Edom bordered Israel on the south, and it was a kingdom long before Israel. See Genesis 36, 31. Edom and Israel, they were skirmished throughout their existence. King Saul battled them. David conquered them. Samuel, 1 Samuel 8.14 Edom remained under Israel's control until the reign of Jeroboam. 2 Kings 8.20 I'm still looking for the name of Edom. Okay. In Greek times, Edom became Idomia, spelled I-D-U-M-E-A. And the roles ironically reversed since Herod's, Herod's family was I-D-U-M-E, I-D-U-M-E-A-N. Ooh, I didn't know that. Ah. Makes sense now. Is there anything else? They say it means red, you know, but there's more to it than that. It's more than just red. Oh gosh, it's one of the horsemen to wait. Okay. Give me a chance here. We're gonna find a little bit. Wait, 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 wait. Edom is mentioned in the Hebrew, but also in a list of no, okay, Babara Shanda Ah, this is going under Egypt. Okay, so we're going to search Edom. We're searching Edom right now. Remember the Edomites? He said he was hungry, right? Wow, that's red. That's really red. Okay, I'm searching. I'm still searching. I'm looking for the, the meaning of the name Edom. Okay. Dera Kamara Fashanda, lady. How fake Jews. Okay, so Edom was actually an enemy of Israel. I just like remember how wow. Remember how um Jacob stole the blessing and but God had already ordained him. That's why he took hold of Esau's heel when he was coming out to the womb. <laughs> and he says, no, you don't, because what does the Bible say in Genesis? Um, the serpent 
take hold of the heel. There's something there. We gotta search it. We gotta search these two things. Edom and taking hold of the heel. I believe in Christ the Son. I know there is a there is a meaning behind it, and I have to find it. And we don't go in force until we find it. How can I pause this thing? I can't. Can I? There we go. To take hold of. Why his heel? All right. Now taking hold of the activity of managing or exerting control over something. He's making a statement. It's like, hey, I am going to have the blessing. You might be first out of the womb, but God has ordained it to me. God knew me from before I was in the womb, all right? Um, that's why Jacob took a hold of Esau's heel. <laughs> I keep doing that. It's funny. So wait. Here we go. How do we get here? How do we get to Jacob? Whew. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, God was showing the birth of them and then he in the spirit and he was showing how he took hold of Esau's heel. And it means, hey, he's taking control off. He's like, even though, oh, so here's why he's bringing it in. He says, okay, even though Israel, the land, Israel, the people, Israel, they are my holy people. They are my consecrated people. They're the olive tree. Guess what? It's up to us. Amen. It's up to us right now to take hold of the blessing that they cannot see. That they're blinded from right now. That the fullness of the Gentiles may come in. Ah, I get it. He's, uh, I get it. 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 The one who walks in faith will be rewarded. The one who steps out, the one who really takes a hold of it. Um, do you remember the, the meaning of taking hold of? To exert control or management over. Um, I was hoping there was a Hebrew explanation for that. In it, this one, taking. Hallelujah. I like it. Ah, he just gave me. I was like, who? Why is Abba showing me the birth of Esau and Jacob? So he's saying, listen, I knew you from before you were in your mother's womb. If God is for us, then who can stand against us? Okay, I knew you. In Jeremiah 1, reading from verse 4 to 6. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I've appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Then I said at last, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak because I am a youth. So God is saying, hey, before you were even in your mommy's womb, I knew you. And I, I ordained you. I called you. He said, I chose you, you did not choose me. Wait, here's what he says. But the Lord said to me, do not say that I am a youth, because everywhere I send you, you shall go, and all that I command, you will speak. The boss speaks and we gotta listen. He, there is no, there is no denying, he's speaking. Remember Jonah, Jonah got rebuked for it. Um, Moses, Moses said, Lord, I can't speak. How am I going to go for Pharaoh? He said, do not be afraid of them. For I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. In Jeremiah 1, 8. Hallelujah, Father. <sighs> Ow. Then the Lord stretched out his hand and touched my mouth. 
And the Lord said to me, Behold, I've put my words in your mouth. See, I've appointed you this day over the nations and over kingdoms. This is why he was, okay. And pluck up, to pluck up and break down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Amen. Here we go. The word of the Lord came to me saying, what do you see, Jeremiah? He says, I see the rod of an almond tree. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, we're reaching far. Oh, this is good. Almond tree. Almond. Keep watch. Almond. Wait, wait, wait. The budding of the tree. We're going there. We're going there. Yes, we're going there. The Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I am watching over my word to perform it. All right. Remember what he said? We're, we're coming back there, okay? But we're just going to say, I chose you. You didn't choose me. He brought us. Amen. Yay. My life is such an adventure. All I could do is smile. <laughs> um, John 15, reading from verse... Fifteen to seventeen. And it says, Henceforth, John fifteen fifteen, reading from verse fifteen to seventeen, henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth what what? Okay, henceforth I call you not a servant, for the servant knoweth not what the Lord what his Lord is doing or his master is doing, but I've called you as friends. For all things I've heard of my father, I've made known to you. That's why he's called the teacher, the, the guide, all right? You have not chosen me. I have chosen you, and I ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you ask the father in my name, he will give it to you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. If God is for us, then who can be against us? Ah, remember we're reading Jeremiah 1. Is Jeremiah? Yeah. Jeremiah 1. Wow. It's alignment again. Jeremiah 1, 1, 1. Okay, and it's the almond tree. Now, let's find the, something about the almond tree. Okay, the olive tree is ripe. The fig tree, the olive tree is um is broken off and we're grafted in. There's so many mention of trees, trees, almond, almond tree. I heard this lovely, um, the almond definition and meaning. Let's go. All right. So there's a period that we entered in, even this year. Um, when was it? I think it was with the super moon, okay, the blood moon. And there is a festival where is it a festival i don't know if i should call it a festival tb shavat tb shavat um tb shavat tb shavat i was learning about this you know i was researching about this when i got the revelation of the the, the fourth month and whatever and whatever and it was just blind mind blowing All right, listen. <sighs> it's a Jewish holiday occurring on the 15th day of the Hebrew month of Shavat. And Shavat begins, to be Shavat begins on sunset on January the 30th and ends on nightfall January the 31st. What did we get on that day? We got a super blood, a super blue, a super blue blood moon. God forgive her. I suppose you think I'm talking for myself. 
<laughs> a super blue blood moon. A super, a super moon. Okay, we got a we got a super moon. And what is this day? Israel, Israel celebrates the day of ecological awareness day. Trees are planted in celebration. Um, we gotta find the meaning of the almond tree right now. Almond, almond, Papa. Here's what he says. He says, keep watch because I am going to perform my word in Jeremiah 1, 11 to 12. I can't see anything on my screen right now. Like all my scriptures are just dazzling me. I have too many things open. Close this off. Ah, remember he said, um, okay, here we go. Woo, hallelujah. Father, help me here. All right, in Jeremiah 1, 11, I see, we're going to read it right now. Wow, this is powerful. Get ready to take it in. See, I've appointed you this day over the nations and over the kingdoms to pluck up and break down and destroy and overthrow, to build up and plant. The word of the Lord came to me saying, what do you see, Sir Jeremiah? It's a prophet. And he said, I see the rod of an almond tree. And then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am watching over my word to perform it. God is not slow or slack considering his promises. Amen. A rod. Who had a rod? Moses had a rod. Aaron had a rod. The word of the Lord came to me a second time saying, what do you see? And I said, I see a boiling pot facing away from the north. A boiling pot facing away from the north. And then the Lord said to me, out of the north, the evil will break forth and all the inheritance of the land. Listen, China, Russia, listen. For behold, I am calling all the families of the kingdoms of the, north, of the north, declares the Lord. And they will come and they will set each one his own throne at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem and against all its walls and about and against the city of Judea, of Judah, of Judea, of Judah. And I will pronounce my judgments on them concerning all their wickedness whereby they have forsaken me and have offered sacrifice unto other gods and worship the works of their own hands. Uh-oh. Now gird up your loins and arise and speak to them all which I command you. Do not be dismayed before them or I will be dismayed. I will dismay you before them. remember all right so Jonah when God told Jonah go and warn Nineveh that the judgment of the Lord is coming and no um, maybe Noah Jonah said these are the enemies of my people and I don't want God's mercy to come to them I'm not gonna warn them of anything and what happened to Jonah he jumped on a ship he tried to run from God and what? He got dumped out. He got dumped out of the boat and a fish swallowed him and he was in the belly of the whale or the fish. Three days and three nights. Oh my gosh, you're all gonna kill me here with the scent, man. Pepper everywhere. <laughs> my eyes are burning. So um God here's what God God told the prophet, he said, gird up your loins and arise and speak to them which I command you. Do not be dismayed before them or I will dismay you before them. If you don't give, if you don't tell them, I'm going to shame you in front of them. Wait. I'd rather smell Portugal than anything here right now. Jesus is coming back. Tell somebody, Jesus is coming back. 
And the day of the Lord is surely coming as a day burning, burning like an oven. Let's find where the rod is. Wow. If God is for you, who can be against you? All right. He's showing me Gideon in the spirit right now. Where we're going to search the almond, the almond tree first. The almond, the almond tree in Bible scripture. Ah, he wants me to go, 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 go into Aaron's. Aaron's rod was a star that budded. What? What did it bud? Almonds, didn't it? Where is my sin? Where is my shame? Oh, Jesus! Okay, in Numbers 17, reading from verse 7 to 9. Why are we going here? Because as the leaders of the earth, you, you see them doing things, okay? North Korea won't back down. Trump has come and given the, the State of Union statement. Man, so many things have been going forth and forth. And everybody's rising up to put their peace in. Russia is coming and China is there. Man, it's... Okay, let's find out why. What's happening? Numbers... Ouch. Number 17, reading from verse 7 to 9. So Moses... Let's read a little bit further down. All right. Number 17, reading from verse 5 onwards, okay? And it will come about that the rod of the man whom I choose will sprout. Thus, I will lessen from upon myself the grumblings of the son of Israel who are grumbling against you. I'm going to show you who I chose. Wow, we're 37% already. All right. Um, Moses therefore spoke to the children, of the sons of Israel and their leaders and gave them each a rod, a stick. And according to their father's household, 12 rods with the rod of Aaron among their rods. So Moses deposited the rods before the Lord in the tent of the testimony tabernacle okay now the next day Moses went into the tent of the testimony and behold the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi had sprouted and put forth buds and produced blossoms and it bore ripe almonds he's chosen Moses then brought out all the rods from the presence of the Lord to the house to the sons of Israel and they looked and each man took his rod. I don't know, maybe they marked it or something, you know? I'm sure they marked it because God was saying, Hey, whoever whoever um, rod I choose, I'm going to use that man as high priest, okay? But the Lord said to Moses, Put back the rod of Aaron before the testimony to be kept as a sign against the rebels that you may put an end to their grumblings against me so they will not die. And Moses did just as the Lord has commanded him. And so he did. Almonds. Blossoming almonds. Just a second. Then the sons of Israel spoke to Moses, saying, Behold, we perish, we're dying, we're all dying. They kept they kept mocking, you know, whatever. So God selected the high priest, okay? And now now, guess who's the high priest in heaven? He has already become the high priest. He is the high priest. He's he's done the sanctuary work. And now he's just awaiting 
he's awaiting the time he's awaiting till he right now repentance prayers everything is going up god is saying if i'm for you who can be against you i have called you according to my purpose and according to my plan god is saying listen as i selected aaron out of all of them and i showed them i showed them that i selected aaron i chose you you did not choose me when i say go you go if you do not go guess what it's not going to be good okay so um Je that's in jeremiah 11 where he said he'll shame us before if we don't go and um i'm still looking at the the significance of the almond tree all right <sighs> so anyway okay we're gonna find this almond has a significant almond means what almonds is a very tasty thing huh? we know that right amen and he said to us where's the scripture where he said keep watch it's in jeremiah as well right we'll find it right so he tells us what his plans are where he's bringing the kings of the north he's telling us keep watch time's not yet but it is at hand The rod of an almond tree shaked. I've seen the rod of an almond, uh, almond tree shaked. I've seen the rod of an almond tree shaked. I will hasten my word to perform it. Almond is considered a best thing, by the way. Okay? We see certain people rising up. <laughs> To people we didn't even expect to see standing up for God. Amen. They're standing up. Because God said, I chose, I put those leaders there. I put those kings there. Just like I selected Aaron. I, I put them there. And I know why I put them there. Now remember, Aaron turned against God after it. And he died. Yeah, he died. Um, but God says, right now, keep watch. I want to find that scripture. Where did we find it? We're gonna find it. We're, I gotta find it back. Come on, Bible verse. Jeremiah 1 12. But there was something else. No, there was three, wasn't it? Okay, so it was Jeremiah 1. Jeremiah 1. Jeremiah 1, reading from verse 11. Right, okay, so that's it. The word of the Lord came to me. Let's get the King James Version. If God is for us, then who can be against us? Then I'm seeing Gideon in the spirit. So we're going there. We're going to Gideon. Oh, Jesus. I have 3% left. Okay. Moreover, the word of God came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I say, oh gosh, I'm going to have to cut this and then come back. Okay. The word of the Lord. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. And said the Lord to me. Thou hast seen well, for I will hasten my word to perform it. Remember he says, unless those days were shortened, no flesh would survive. He says, behold, I'm coming quickly and my rewards are with me. When you see these signs, know that I'm even at the doors. Okay. Um, 
Okay, I think I should end it right here until, until, hi, until, until I charge my phone again. I'm just going to charge, charge my phone and I'm going to come back, okay? Um, uh, we're searching the almond tree and then we're going to Gideon. Got to show me Gideon in the spirit. Gideon. The battle of Gideon. Where he chose. Remember he chose? In Judges 7. So we're going to continue in Judges 7, right there. Um, the Lord said to Gideon, The people who are with you are too many for me to give to Midian and into, my, into their hands. For Israel will come boastful, saying, Their own power has delivered them. So therefore, proclaiming the hearing of the people, say, Whoever is afraid and trembling, let him return and depart from the Mount of Gilead. So 22,000 people are returned, but only 10,000 remained. And the Lord said, The people are still too much. So I'll test them, bring them to the water, that I will test them there for you. And therefore it shall be he, he whom I say to you, this one shall go, he shall go with you. But everyone whom I say, this one shall not go, he shall not go. For he, for he brought the people down to the water, and the Lord said, Gideon, you shall separate everyone who laps the water with his tongue like the dog laps, as well as everyone who kneels to drink. Now the number of those who lapped, putting their hand to the mouth, were three hundred men. <sighs> but all, but all the rest of the people kneeled to drink water. And the Lord said, "Gideon, I will deliver you with three hundred men, who lapped, and will give the Midianites into your hands. So let the other people go, and each man to his home." Okay. So the 300 men took the people's provision and their trumpets into their hands, and Gideon sent all the rest home, each to their tent. All right, so we're reading when we come back, Judges 7, verse 9. In Jesus' name, I'm ending it right here because I have 1% left, okay? I'll come back shortly. In Jesus' name, amen.